show you how to make a wavy flag using your CNC machine. Now I use an X card for this. Um, it can be done on a Shapoko and other CNC machines. I'm going to show you how to import an STL file that I purchased off of Etsy. And I will show you how to model that based off of your stock uh, based off of the material that you're using. Uh, for this video, I am using one inch thick walnut. Uh, the piece that I have laminated together is roughly 24 inches by 14 or 15 inches. I think it's about 14 inches. Um, this flag will be a smaller flag. Uh, total dimensions are gonna be around 13 inches by 23 inches, uh, somewhere in that effect. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so I open up this file that I, I have labeled as walnut flag. Um, I'm going to come over here to the dimensions for my stock. And I currently have it set at 30 inches by 18. So I'm going to set that to 24 inches by let's say 14 inches, confirm that. Now, as you can see, this flag has to be sized down. Uh, let's size this down to 23 and we'll just let it naturally do its thing. So 23 by 11.7. I'm going to remove this. So basically now what we need to do is import our STL file. So you come down here to your modeling, you come up here to your folder tab, and I've got to go find all my stuff. So in here, yes. So I'm going to go with model number six. All right, so this is what the model looks like. Now, if you see, this is your model size. Now, obviously my Z axis is not almost 32 inches. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so I'm going to shrink this down to, we'll go with 24 inches and hit apply. And okay. Okay, all right, now we gotta come back in here. We got to change our shape height because our stock is only one inch. So I'm going to bring this down to about 0.99. That way I know I get a little bit of a top piece cut off. And close. So we'll go back here to the 2D view. And as you can see, now our model is behind the flag. All right, so now let's go ahead and go into our toolpaths. So I'm going to select the model. I'm gonna come up here to the toolpaths. And I'm going to get rid of all of these because this is old stuff. All right. So I've got that selected, so I'm gonna do my roughing toolpath. Now, the model thickness is one inch. Everything else stays the same. Hit okay, and I'm going to select a one inch ball nose. Now this is um, actually a cove molding bit that I use. And my feed rate's 120 inches. I let this thing fly. Um, step over is 22%. Uh, Hit select. And calculate. Let this do its magic. All right, let's do a preview just to see what it does. So 
and now we want to do our detail pass. We'll come over here to the detail pass. Now I use a half inch ball nose for this. And I'll show you my step over is 8%. And that really does minimize the uh, tool marks. And this is really one of the things that you want because it cuts down the amount of sanding you have to do. So now we will hit calculate. All right, now for the interest of time, I'm going to uh, wait until I'm done to do the whole preview. All right, so we'll hit close, and now we're going to go back over here to the 2D model. So now we want to go ahead and carve our stars and stripes. Um, I will go ahead and I've got these grouped together because it's all I'm going to do is one uh, tool path. Well, two tool paths because I'll clearance. So I'm going to go here to your V bit. And I use, I'm going to change this. I'm going to go a little deeper and go to 0 0.7075. Uh, I use a 60 degree V bit on this. Um, my depth isn't very deep. Uh, a lot of people like perfectly cut stars uh, where the center of the star is um, at the deepest point of the cut. I actually kind of like a flat center to my stars. Uh, so I don't use a 90, I use a 60. Uh, it's just personal preference. And then I'm gonna use a eighth inch bit. That's an end mill, um, just a down cut spiral bit that I'm gonna use to do the clearance. And I will come here and I will hit calculate. Now, Oh, one of the things you must do if you're going to do it on the 3D model is this box right here. All right, so it's still doing the roughing pass. I wanted to pick back up here uh, because it should be doing the detail pass soon. And you'll see uh, what that tool path looks like and how the tool marks go away. Uh, these previews can, man, they can take a while, uh, really depending on your settings. Like I said, this is a pretty conservative carve just because I really don't want to screw anything up. So I'm, I'm just kind of getting a feel for it. But now it's doing the detail pass and you can see how it's really starting to smooth out. Okay, as we near the end of the detail pass, I will show you what can happen if you do not select the box that says to project the toolpath onto the 3D model. As you will see, where, where's, it, where's the toolpaths? They're not there. Where did they go? Well, so basically, the way that the toolpath is set up is it does not follow the contours of the model. So I have to show you how to do this so you have a good understanding. Now, all that time that we just spent watching the roughing pass and detail pass was wasted, but it's okay, we'll get over that. All right, so check this out. So we come back up here to your toolpath and we are going to come back here we're going to double click on this. Now, there's a box right here. This is important. Click Project Toolpath onto 3D Model. Hit Calculate. Now, the toolpath follows the contour. So, we are going to see if this works so I don't have to redo everything. There we go. Yes. Now you can see the toolpath. All right, and that's the roughing pass with the, with the eighth inch bit. And now I'm coming back with a 60 degree. There you go, that's it. Voila, it's beautiful, it's so pretty. All right, and just like anything else, you go over here and you save your toolpaths. And then I use easel, so I uh, I save my toolpaths and I just import the G-code into easel. Uh, easel will cut the 3D G-code, no problem. Um, that's basically it as far as 
the tool paths go. It's actually a very easy setup. Now I'm going to show you the tool bits that I actually use, and hopefully you can pick some of these up to use for your next wavy flag. I'll start with the one inch cove bit. It's just a common cove bit. Uh, you could probably find this at your local hardware, hardware dealer. I actually purchased this one on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below. This one works really well at taking a lot of material out quickly. Um, you don't have to worry so much about your step over just because you're gonna you're really gonna eat through the material down to your your point where you're ready for your detail. Uh, next up is the quarter inch ball nose bit. I use this for my detail pass for the wavy flag. Um, it leaves a really nice smooth finish with the eight percent step over. For my roughing pass for the stars and stripes, I use this white side uh, eighth inch down cut bit. I actually just purchased this uh, and uh, I'm very impressed with it so far. I'll link that in the description as well. And then last up is my 60 degree V bit. Uh, this is the Spectra Coda V bit by Amana Tools. I uh, purchased this through Tools Today through Amazon, so I'll link that as well. All right, so that wraps it up for this portion of the video. Uh, I really wanted to take the time to just kind of show you how this was modeled. Um, I know a lot of people have asked, you know, where did I get the model and how do I import the Stars and Stripes? Um, the Stars and Stripes did come from uh, Etsy, I believe. I think it's just a regular SVG file that I downloaded. Uh, pretty simple. Um, going forward in this video, I'm going to show you how I actually made this flag. Uh, so it may be a little lengthy. Hopefully I still have your attention and if I do, please give this video a like and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing videos like this more often.